This week on the Mastering Laravel newsletter, I've been kind of diving deep into validation rules uh, in response to a question I got where someone was wondering if they had one of their own custom class-based rules, how could they register that to refer to it with like a, a string name? You know, like we have required or email rules in Laravel. How can I do that for my custom class-based rules? And I'm not going to answer that here. If you want to know the answer, go check out the newsletter. I discuss it in depth there as a three-part series. But today is more about how I figured out the answer. Because, you know, I, I see a lot of Laravel developers that use DD, right, to figure out how code works. And that's great. I use it too. But there are some cases where it really doesn't do the job. And today, I think, is one of those. So, for example, if you wanted to know how does Laravel take the, the string rule called required and convert that into some validation logic? Like, how does that happen? Where would you even start to look? Where would you put the DD to figure that out? I, you know, I could come up with some ideas and maybe you could figure it out, but I want to show a way that we can use Xdebug in PHP Storm to get to the answer, I think a little more quickly and maybe even learn a little bit more along the way. So here's how I did it, and, and maybe you'll find this useful. So I would just open up a form request, right? Um, what do we got here? Here's one. This is just a, a demo project. And look at this. I, I already put a breakpoint on here. And what this means is when I'm debugging, step debugging through my code, when it gets to a breakpoint, it'll just pause. And it'll show me all sorts of information, and I can move forward a line in code, I can change code as it's running, I can play with variables, I can do all sorts of things, but it really helps me to understand how the code is running. But I know this is where my rules are configured. So this is sort of like a launching point to get back into like what parts of the framework are going to use this array of rules and then how will those rules get executed? So I have my breakpoint set. The next question is like, well, how do you trigger the breakpoint? There are different ways to do it. Um, I like doing it from tests. I, I write a lot of tests. So let's just open up, let's see, listing test. And we have a, a method here that's going to call this is, if maybe notice this was a store request. This is a store test. So I don't even have to set any breakpoints or anything in the test. But when I click this runner, and I'm going to do it using the mouse to make it a little bit more visual on a video, I have hotkeys to do all this stuff from the keyboard too. But notice if I hit debug, when it runs my test, it's going to run it in debug mode and it hits my breakpoint and stops. And so just like I was talking about, I'll switch over to this view. I get all this information. This is the full call stack. Did you know Laravel was doing all this stuff for you when a, when a test runs or when a request comes into the framework? But it paused on this rules method and I can see variables over here. But then I can sort of play with the execution. So I could say, well, let's step over this. And some interesting things, this is PHP Storm specific, other editors might do this differently. It'll even sort of superimpose the most relevant variable values as I'm going through this. Um, so if I just keep stepping over this, I'm not really paying attention. I, I know how a form request works, but what happens beyond this? All right, now I'm in the container. I don't even know where I am. I'm just gonna keep stepping, right? This is, I'm just talking out loud. Here's how I think about it. So I'm gonna keep going stepping over. Okay, now we're to something that's actually talking about validation. I'm in the form request class. This is starting to look more interesting. Um, if I wanted to, I could dig into this. I could step over it though. I'm going to keep stepping. All right, we're going, we're going. Now here we're getting to something. And again, some of this is subjective. Some of this is intuition because I've done this a bunch of times, but I'm looking for where is the logic? Where is the thing that's going to actually evaluate my rules with my request data and, and tell me if it passes or not? Here we go. Fails. So this is an example where I would step in. So if I go into this, well, it's just the opposite of passes. So I'm going to step in one more time. Now we're getting somewhere. So I keep going here. I keep going. It's going to loop over all of my rules. And I'm just going to keep scrolling down. Um, and, and this validate attribute, if we get down to there, because now it's like, all right, is this thing going to pass or not? Let's step into that. All right. This is getting good. And I know this because I did this before when I was researching this, but this is actually the relevant bit of code. 
Here we're starting to parse validation rules. I could step over that and I could see, okay, interesting. It changed my rule from like a lower case required to an upper case required, like what's going on with that? I can keep going. Um, at the bottom of this method though, here's where the, the actual rubber meets the road, right? So if it's a rule contract, that is if it's a class-based rule, it would just call that code. But if it's one of these string-based rules, it's gonna skip over that. And you, you can even notice the, um, the editor is kind of graying out code that will not run because it knows, for example, this conditional is false, therefore this will not run, and, and it lets your eye just kind of skip over it. If I keep going, it's gonna construct a method na name with the word validate and then like uppercase required. So it's gonna call a method validate required, camel case notation. If I jump down there and I step into that, here's that method. So here's where it actually executes the logic. And I'm in a trait called validates attributes. If you look at this thing, this is where like almost all of the validation rules live. Some more complex ones that deal with database interactions and things are in a different class. But we, we sort of hit the, the, um, the main point here of what the validation logic is. And I realize it's taking the word required and it's converting the case because it's ultimately gonna call a method name with it. So that's giving me some clues back to my original question, like how can I register that for myself? How would I do that? So anyways, I, all of this was not to meant to be, not to answer directly the question about validation rules or to give you a comprehensive tutorial on Xdebug because it does so much more than what I showed, but just to put it on your radar, if you've never tried it, or maybe you tried it like five years ago and you could never get it working reliably, give it a try again. It's a very valuable tool. Even if it's something you don't use every day, I don't use it every day, it's good to have it in the toolbox when you wanna go deeper or really figure out some tricky bit of code. So give that a try.